Hello and welcome to Hacks, where I try to simplify cybersecurity. We are back on Hack This Site, a website that allows you to test out and learn new hacking skills. We have been going through the realistic missions, which are simulations of websites that you may find out in the wild. And the purpose of these challenges, of these missions, is to hack them for the client. So today we are looking at what's right for America, realistic mission number seven. A homophobic hate group is spreading their conservative propaganda of blind obedience and bigoted warmongering. Harp tolerance activists take over their website of ignorance and discrimination. Let's take this challenge. So we have a message from Freedom of Choice and it says... Friend of Freedom and Liberty invite you to look at the hate speech being spewed over the web at URL. It's so funny that conservatives keep saying they want to protect the values of American freedom, tolerance and democracy. But when it comes to personal choices like private marijuana use or same-sex marriage, they damn them to burn in eternal hell and send them to jail. This is a personal freedom issue. No one else gets hurt if two consenting adults decide to marry, but people who claim to have the moral high ground decide to ruin it all for everyone else and discriminate against same-sex couples. To think that they are talking about making a constitutional amendment to stop our freedom to marry is ludicrous. This injustice must be stopped. There is an admin section on the website somewhere, perhaps hidden among the directory structure. It would be great to find a fight against moral tyranny and a victory for freedom if you could somehow hack their website. I couldn't agree more. Uh, the internet could do with less of this, if I'm honest, but... Okay, let's get this straight. I understand that the internet is an open platform for exchange of information and everyone is entitled to their opinion but you know opinions are like assholes as everyone says everyone has got one or something something like that um hate speech i, I don't feel is welcome on the internet but what one's person interpretation of hate speech could be could be completely normal to another person now this is totally intolerable um again you know Adults should have the right to marry who they want to right, regardless of their gender. Totally support that. Marijuana use, well, you know, 420, I'm not an avid, I don't partake, but each to their own. You know, why should people not be allowed to smoke a bit of weed if we can drink alcohol, which I would argue is a far more dangerous substance. Anyway, political rant out of the way. Uh, let's go and take a look at the website. So we can see right here it is full of sort of hate messaging. What's right for America? The right is taking back America. We really love it. Our latest campaign, Stop Gay Marriage. Pfft, losers. Help spread the word. Uh, I believe this link down at the bottom, the Savage Nation, is an actual link. So, you know, if you take this site, be cautious not to visit it. Uh, we've got a number of links here number of images but the first thing that draws my attention when visiting the site which you should be able to see is this show images.php file has a parameter called file which is calling a text file called patriot.txt now this appears to be local file inclusion so it does set alarm bells off immediately so if we take patriot.txt and have a look at it in the url and see what we can see so it looks like the text file that's being called via the parameter is being used to embed these images into the website. We can see they're being called from the images directory to Patriot 1, Patriot 2, Patriot 3. That's debatable. Um, so what I am pleased to see is that it's using relative paths instead of absolute paths. Now relative paths are paths to the image from the current location in the directory. Relative paths, sorry, absolute paths will display the whole path of the file system. So it would be var, root, lib, www, html, something along those lines, if I recall correctly. So at least they're using uh, relative file paths. However, we now know that there is an images directory. So if we change directory and just see if we can access it, normally directory listing should be disabled. So we shouldn't be able to see what's in this directory. But as you can see, um, apologize for my picture being in the way, but the only thing we really need to note here is that we have an admin directory and a bunch of images 
that the file parameter in the script was calling. If we try to access this admin directory, we get an error. Okay, it says I've already completed it. But what happens is, is that we get a pop-up message, um, which doesn't look like a SQR-backed application login page. It looks like something you would find if you were utilizing a HT access, HT password file. And a HT password file allows you to password protect directories by telling, by, by specifying the location of the file and the directory in the HT access file. Then in the HT password file, you would put the password for that. So whenever you try to access that directory, you would get a prompt, um, which unfortunately you can't see here, but you would get a prompt come up showing that it's password protected. Instead of seeing like a pretty application with um, a username and login that would send a query request to the SQL Server. This appears to be something entirely different. So if we go back to Realistic 7 and have a look around a bit more, um, so we know now that directory listing is enabled on images and that we have an admin directory. So images, whoops. Yeah, probably should uh, exit out of that. We got an admin directory, but we also know that when we click on any of these links, we're also doing show images.php file equals patriots. So we know that it's doing a local file inclusion. We don't know for sure that it is a HT password file, although it's pretty conclusive, but there may also be other stuff in that admin directory which we can use. Now we can't read it, but because this script is running as the web server, as Apache, uh, as the Apache user, the script may have permissions to access that admin directory. So what we can do is if we grab the whole URL, and we head over to our virtual machine, we can use a tool called derb, which is a file and directory brute forcing tool. And we can paste the contents of the URL and then we can tell it to search because it's going to use that parameter, but we're going to tell it to search in images admin. It was called admin, wasn't it? Remind me. Um, so if we search that, it should immediately find HT access and HT password, as you can see on the screen. So, now that we know that the dot HT access and the .ht password files exist, what we can do is we can utilize the parameter, the file parameter that was doing the local file inclusion to access those files, hopefully in the admin directory. So if we go forward slash images, because remember the admin directory is in the images directory, and then we go admin. And let's first take a look at the .ht access file. Now, you can see a bunch of errors have occurred on the screen because the images are no longer being embedded. This is a suggestion that it may have worked. So if we look at the page source of the application, what we can see now is the contents of the HT access file, which as you can see is referencing the .ht password file. So we know that that is what is being used for authentication. So next, if we can just come back up to the URL and change this to HT password, or HT pass WD. Hopefully what we should get is the contents of that file, including the specified password, which once we have, we should be able, we should be able to get into that admin area. So as you can see here, we do have a password. However, it looks to be hashed, but it's for the user administrator. But if we take this string, which is administrator, blah, 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 blah and we head back to our virtual machine. Now I know I've already got a file there. So I'm just going to do that. And then I do sudo vim hash 2.txt. I don't know why you sudo them, but never mind. Uh, punch in our password, insert, paste. I am a Vim escape artist. So now we have the hash inside a file called hash2 and we can use our old friend 
John the Ripper, which is a password cracking tool, to do hash 2.txt. And hopefully this won't take so long. Brilliant, almost instantly. Now, the reason why that was probably so quick is it is an MD5, as you can see there, but also it's got a fairly obvious password of Shadow. And Shadow's probably fairly high up in the list of um, the default word list that John uses. So that's all I did. I ran John hash 2. I didn't specify a word list or the hash, and it cracked it fairly easily. So we know the password is Shadow. So if we head back to the application, now, it will probably error because I've already successfully did it, but all you need to do is go to Images, Admin, and then when the pop-up box comes up, you just specify Administrator, as that's the user that was in the HT pass, pass WD file, and then the password of Shadow, and that should allow you to complete the mission. Now, I thought this was a really fun mission, if I'm being honest. It's Hack the Site is so immersive, more immersive than other platforms I've been using recently. Hack the Box is great, some of the machines are great, but I feel like the themes on the boxes, they're all fairly generic. Hack Moto Company, Hack This, Hack That, Megacorp. They're fun though, they're, they're fun boxes and a lot of them is, is like a higher skill level than what we're doing here. But the themes that are used on these sites, they're, they're quite inflammatory so we've hacked nazis we've hacked telemarketers we've hacked fascists and now we're hacking homophobia you know and it's great because it does give you um the moral high ground i suppose but it, it does feel like it's giving you an incentive to go and hack it you, you almost want to hack these websites because they are advertising horrible messages and yeah, I, I completely agree with the messages of the websites we've hacked so far. You know, it's... Sorry, I completely disagree with the messages of the websites that we've hacked so far. I am for pro-choice and equality. I, I do feel like everyone has the right to make their own decisions about who they sleep with, who they marry. People should be able to smoke weed as long as it doesn't, doesn't impact other people. Uh, the smell can be a bit annoying, you know, but it's up to you. It's your life. Obviously, if your actions harm another person, then, yeah, you, you need to be doing something about that. But anyway, what lessons can be learned from these messages? Well, let's start with directory traversal. We've covered it a few times in our videos, but directory traversal, directory listings. Directory listings can expose more information than you intended to the public. And a malicious threat actor would love this. It, it, they could use it to gather information about the application, the application structure, what technologies you're using. You know, if you're like hiding file names, you can see that it's a PHP file or an ASP file. You can usually deduce that information from the site anyway, but this would have just it gives you a wealth of information also if you've got text files that aren't indexed by google maybe a malicious threat actor will be able to see that and if they contain sensitive information like hashes then that information is useful to a malicious actor because they could put that in their word list once it's cracked and then try and uh, brute force your login page so don't allow directory listings on your website unless of course you want to because you're sharing stuff that you want other people to see and be able to download but there are other ways to do that so that's my lesson for information disclosure limit that the second is local file inclusion now the main reason why we were able to get into that admin area was due to the trust that the web server had because it would have been running under a user that had access to those files but the way in which you were calling the the way in which the application was calling the images file was just absurd uh, uh, peculiar honestly um, I mean, you would hard, usually hard code the path into the application, but this was using a parameter to fetch a file that had a list of the applications. And because it's fetching a file, we know the functionality exists to call local files on the system through that parameter. So we can manipulate that parameter and get it to call files from other directories like the admin directory. Now, that parameter parameter that parameter should have been being sanitized or it just shouldn't have been there in the first place you know um 
parameters can be used to hack a lot of different things you know you can brute force them to get more information out of them so you just need to be careful with the parameters that you're using and finally uh, I suppose it comes down to uh, the authentication method. Now, I have no problem with hasty access and hasty password. I think it's a good, quick, and effective solution. Like Bash Scripts, and it's quick and easy. Um, and the MD5. Again, MD5s are still used, but they're normally salted. However, we should not be able to access files in your hasty access and hasty password protected directories. And then, once we've got the password from those uh, from that file, we shouldn't be able to crack it. It should be using encryption that's strong. So it could have been a salted MD5 where you add an additional sort of value at the start of it, which gets hashed. So it makes it harder to crack by increasing the length. I believe that's how it works. I could be talking out my arse, but yeah. That's it. Those are the lessons from this mission. I hope you enjoyed it. If you do, give me a thumbs up. Um, I am the one that hacks. Um, but that's it for today. Come back next time for some more videos. Like and subscribe. Take care. Hack the planet. Please hang up and try again.